Where are we at right now? We've been looking at these exponential functions and their um, twin brothers, the logarithms, and now that we know how to differentiate and integrate functions related to them, it just sort of opens up a whole new category of different kinds of problems that we know how to deal with. All of the curve sketching stuff, all of the working out areas, I suppose if we wanted to, working out volumes, anything to do with exponentials or logs, we now have access to. Okay? So here's a quick example. And what I love about this is that the amount of information you get is so vanishingly small, but you can still work out everything you need just from that. Okay? So they give us a curve. They say between this curve and the coordinate axis, what area is bounded? Like what's the size of that area? It's not too complicated a question. But even though it's not said, you really need to get a picture on the board, right? Like how, how do you even know where this thing is um, and how these relate until you get a picture? Okay? So, anyone have a crack at explaining to me, like without putting pen to paper, how would you describe this curve that you've been given? Use some words, Jack. Oh, it's below the x axis before x equals to one. Okay, very good. So I've been um, I've been moved down, haven't I? That's the the minus e has given me a vertical shift that way, and of course e of dx. We know exactly what that shape looks like, so I'm expecting this kind of thing, right? Um, because e of the x usually has a horizontal asymptote at at y equals zero, this will have a horizontal <coughs> asymptote at y equals e minus e. negative e. Very good. So I'm going to pop that in. Now, I've got my y, y equals negative e. Okay. So that looks good. What other kinds of um, values can I put onto here? I've got some intercepts, right? Will they be useful to me? Now, I'm going to pause for a second and ask, which intercepts are going to be useful to me? Because I'm not just going to put on stuff just because it's there. I want to do, remember I said, you do the least amount possible, classic mathematical laziness, in order to actually answer the question. For instance, I mean, a y-intercept is usually a kind of important thing to know, but what relevance does it have to this question? Oh, no, you only need the second x. Yeah, I don't actually need the y-intercept, do I? I mean, if I wanted to integrate with respect to the y-axis, I would need some y boundaries, right? But I mean, what, why would you? There's, there's no need to go to um, an unusual way of approaching the area like that. If I'm thinking about this coordinate axis here, that's the x coordinate axis, and this axis here, the y axis, then you can see, you can see the area that you're after, right? Here it is. That's the one you want, right? There's no reason why I can't just compare that to the x-axis. So what I should have is x-boundary. Yes, yeah, x-boundary. So what's the first x-boundary? Zero. Zero. That's an easy one. Okay. The second x-boundary, not as obvious. How do I find it? You bring e to the x-boundary. Yeah, I'm going to let y equal zero. That can, well, will give you an x in the sense, right? So if y equals zero, so I'm going to write over here for y in the set. Sorry, x in the set. y equals zero, I'm just going to solve that, so e to the x take away e equals zero, e to the x equals e, so x of course is equal to one. one, fantastic. Could you ask for any simpler boundaries, okay? So now that I have that, I can form an integral, but be careful, be careful. What's the actual area that I'm after? It's going to be like, it's this green space here, right? But before you touch an integral, you know that the integral is going to hand you a negative number, right? Because the entire area is below the axis, okay? So I'm not going to say area equals. I know it's a very slightly nuanced thing, but I'm just going to call this thing I'm about to work out. I'll call it A, <coughs> excuse me. And it's not the actual area I want. It's going to give me the negative of the area that I want because it's below the axis. So I can say now, a, this is the actual integral. It's going to be a negative number. The integral from, what did we just say? 0 to 1. Of e to the x take away e with respect to x. Okay, are you happy with that? So we've just done all of the, all of the groundwork to say, okay, now I know what I'm working, and now I just focus on the process of actually integrating. Right? So I've got my square bracket. We've just... Labor the fact that e to the x, when you integrate it, becomes e to the x. What does negative e minus e turn into? Minus e. To this. Yeah, it's, it's just a constant, right? So it'll be minus e x. It's just the straight line that you resolve. 
and then you're integrating from naught to one. You don't need to worry about any constants because it's a what kind of integral? It's a definite. It's a definite integral. I mean, so I could have put plus c in here if I wanted to, but it's going to get added and then subtracted. So that's why it vanishes away. Okay, let's just quickly evaluate. So I've got e to the one take away one e one e e times what? E x. Oh, what? Yeah. And by the way, can I just make a note, right? These are the things that are so easy to just like you're in a hurry, oh, and you're evaluating, yeah. right? And um, yeah, yeah, that's right. So just yeah, be careful, right? Uh, that's why this step it helps you. It's it's sort of like a debugging point for you to think. Oh, okay, I know this is exactly right because all I did was substitute. Have you done any evaluation or simplification? Take away, and I better evaluate at the lower bound, which of course also has its own value. Okay. So what have I got here? I've got e take away e minus one, minus minus one take away zero. And that whole thing is negative one, just as we were expecting because it's below the axis, right? So now, I mean, I've run out of space. I usually put this underneath. But the actual area that I want is one unit squared. Yeah, not really. I mean, the, your diagram is your explanation, right? You, you know how much I talk about diagrams, right? If your diagram looks that good, it is clear that what you get from here is below the axis, and what you're actually looking for is an area, which is the magnitude. Where I suppose you might want to start saying stuff and like being more verbal about it is, if I've got like different areas, like different regions, parts above, parts below, the changes back and forth, I'm going to want to say things like at this point, A is an integral below the axis, so it represents a negative number. And then I might have, sorry, that might be A1, A2 is positive, so I just take that number, and if there's lots of different pieces, like the complexity of the question tells me how much I need to explain, okay? So I'm trying to avoid giving you like a hard and fast rule, like you must always write a sentence, or you must always put absolute value. Well, it kind of depends on what the question is, okay? Okay, so I might, I might say, um, I mean, one way of approaching this is just to wind absolute value signs around this and then just go for it. I've described before why I try to avoid that because it's kind of like, I want to know that it's a negative number because I know what that means. I know from my picture what that means. So it's not like I'm just indiscriminately putting an absolute value because a rule told me so. Um, I think this is perfectly sufficient.